Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here. I just want to go through a few practice problems with electron configurations. So the first one we're going to look at is this quiz which asks us about the electron configuration of sodium. So sodium is located here on the periodic table at number 11. And if we're writing the electron configuration, we could start with um, 1s2 going across the first period, 2s2, 2p6 going across the second period, and then 3s1. That would be our full electron configuration for sodium. And if we wanted to write an abbreviated form, we can take the noble gas that comes before it, which is neon, and we can say neon and then we just have 3s1 remaining because neon takes care of the first 10 electrons. So if we look at our answer choices here, choice number A is incorrect for two reasons. One is we should notice that they skipped the 2p, um, but the other, if we actually count up how many electrons are here, there's only five electrons. So what's written here couldn't even be an excited state configuration for sodium. It is ha it has the wrong number of electrons. So B, of course, is our correct answer. And um, C, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, that's the electron configuration for sulfur. So noticing that on the periodic table there are not names, a lot of people will confuse sodium and sulfur because they think, oh, it starts with S, that one must be sodium. So watch out for that. And then argon for S1 would be potassium, which is just below sodium. So that one is incorrect. Okay, next one. What are the valence electrons in phosphorus? So phosphorus is located here on the periodic table. It's number 15. If we write our abbreviated electron configuration, we'll have neon and then 3s2, 3p3. That would be our electron configuration. And these are all S and P electrons that we've written here that are in the highest principal quantum number, which is three. And so they all qualify as valence electrons. So A is the correct answer here. Um, in terms of answer choices, B and C would be referring to uh, like the core electrons here for neon just by itself. And if we included 3s2, it's like core and some of the valence electrons, but not all of them. And the last one, 3p3, is tricky because it's only taking those electrons in the highest subshell, not the electrons in the highest principal quantum number. So this one is incorrect because it's missing the 3s2 electrons. Remember, our valence electrons are those in the highest principal quantum number, and so everything that's in a, a level that's 3 would be counted here. Okay, next one. Here we have germanium, GE. It's number 32 on the periodic table, located over here. And it's asking which electron or an orbital, sorry, an electron in which orbital of a germanium atom will experience the greatest Z effective. So it's given us three choices here, or sorry, four choices, 2s, 2p, 3p, and 3d. And the greatest Z effective is going to be experienced by those that are closest to the nucleus. So 3p and 3d are going to be out because they're in a higher energy level. 2s and 2p are going to be different from each other because the 2s orbital is going to be closer, having electron density that's closer to the nucleus. So the 2s orbital, the electron that's in that orbital, is going to experience the highest z effective. Okay, 
this one's asking us about gallium. Gallium is located here, just right next to germanium. It's number 31 on the periodic table. And if we write the electron configuration, we're going to get argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1. So this one's a little bit trickier than the last one we saw that was asking about valence electrons because we have S, D, and P electrons here. But we have to remember that valence electrons are only those electrons that are in the highest principal quantum number. So these D10 electrons do not count as valence electrons. So 4S2, 4P1 is going to be the correct answer for our valence electrons for gallium. Okay. Last one we have is nickel. Nickel is number 28. It's located right here on the periodic table. And it asks us how many unpaired electrons does nickel have? So knowing what I know about electron configurations, I know if we start with argon, everything that's in the core is already going to be paired up because it's totally filled. So nothing argon or below is going to matter. So I'm going to do my abbreviated electron configuration then we're going to break it down a little bit more. So we've got argon, 4s2, 3d8 to get to our nickel. And if I look at this electron configuration, I also believe these 4s2 are going to be paired. So that's not going to make a difference. But my d8 electrons, I'm going to have to think about. So I know that I'm going to have five degenerate d orbitals that are all in the 3d sublevel, and if I have eight electrons following Hund's rule when I fill them in I have to fill them in one at a time or singly until all of the orbitals have one electron and then I'm allowed to pair so my sixth seventh and eighth electrons are going to be paired but I'm going to have two of these d electrons that are going to be unpaired so b is going to be the correct answer now a common mistake that people might make if they were filling in these d electrons is to not follow Hund's rule and fill in our eight electrons and come up with zero. That is the wrong way to do it. That's not how it works. We have to fill them in singly one at a time before we pair them up. Okay, those are our practice problems for electron configurations. I hope that's helpful and I hope you have a great day.